Hi guys, bit of a different video for you today. I'm going to be talking about lipos and discharge rates and C ratings and whatnot. So a couple of months back, I bought myself a DBL XLE, the brushless version. And when looking at batteries, you know, it's it became a bit of a minefield. People were saying you need a minimum of this, a minimum of that. Lowest themselves in the manual even claimed minimum 5,000 mile with a minimum C rating of 50. So 250 amps, they, they were basically saying batteries need to do minimum for the buggy to function. And that's where the problem lies. You know, you can't get a C rating of 50. And I'll explain why to you now. So... C rating is determined by internal resistance of a cell. And the internal resistance required to get a C rating as high as 50, you can't really do with current manufacturing techniques and the current materials they use in LiPo batteries. You know, they tend to hover around, say, between 50 and 25. You know, you might get the odd one that's kind of 30 or above, but if anyone's claiming kind of 35C plus on their stickers on the batteries. Yeah, they're lying. If you can see my packs, 8,000 mAh, and it says 100C. A lot of rubbish. I bought these batteries for the capacity and not for the C rating. I knew they wouldn't be that high. And then uh, that little box to the side is, a, is an ESR meter. So what this does is it measures internal resistance of the whole pack and on a per cell basis and gives you an actual real world C rating for the batteries. So this is a battery kind of manufacturer's worst nightmare, this meter is because this will expose all their lies. And there are a few lies, you know, I have been picking on Maxamps and I'm gonna pick on them again. You know, their website's passed with the words true 100C, true 120C. As I said, it's a load of bollocks. You can't get packs that high. And if anybody from Max Amps is watching this and you want to put your money where your mouth is, get in touch and send me a couple of batteries to test. So we'll just start testing these. They are from China, you know, so I'm not expecting much. So we'll just start with the top one. So the meter itself is really simple. You just plug the battery into the power supply. There you go, the meter springs into life, and then it asks you to set the model of the battery. So these packs are 8,000, so we don't want to set the hundreds, we want to set the thousands. So if we go up to eight, that's set. So there we go, capacity is at 8,000 more. And then we take this little dongle here, and we stick him in the balance port. So we're putting him in there. Oh, is it the other way around, is it? There we go. So, cell one. There we go. 2.96 milliohms, an actual C rating of 16C. Now, bear in mind the manufacturer claims 100, which also translates to 800 amps. The meter saying that with that internal resistance, the pack's only going to manage 131 amps. You know. So it kind of says it all. So we'll check the other cells anyway, because we need to see if they're all equal. So cell number two, there we go, 16C again, 131 amps. So, so far it is consistent. So cell number three, 16C, 131 amps. So it's what we want. So, so far, last and final cell. 16C, 131 amps. So there you go. So that pack's actually really well balanced and it's actually really well matched. So for the sake of experiment, we'll check the other three. So power supply to the meter. Hold it down to set the mark. I'm still learning how to bloody use this thing. No, one, two. There's a more again, capacity set. Right then, and there we go. So time to plug in the little dongle. 
So, cell number one, 16C, 131 amps. So, it's actually quite well matched to the other one. So, we'll check cell number two. There we go. 16C, 131 amps. Cell number three. There we go, the exact same. So, so far, they're actually really well matched between the two. There we go, same again. So, you know, the the Chinese company I bought these from have actually done a decent job of matching the cells on at least two battery packs. So we'll keep going. Because I need to test them all anyway. If you look there, that's the whole pack resistance, 15.6. Oh, come on, you git. There we go. <laughs> right then, so let's try this one out. So, cell number one. There we go, 16C, 131 amps. Cell number two. There we go, same again. I'm actually really happy that they're actually coming up as well balanced as they are. There we go. Sometimes you'll get a cell that's not, you know, that's a bit lower than everything else. And what happens is that cell's ultimately the weak point. So, you know, if you've ever taken an RC car out, and when you've got back home and low voltage cutoff has kicked out and you've checked it using a battery meter and you find that one cell's dead, it's generally because it's got a much higher internal resistance than the other cells. So, last battery. So, no, put the plug in the wrong way. So, cell one. So, there we go. Same as the others, which is good. Oh, so that one's 128 amps. So, I think that one's slightly lower. That's... Yeah, so it's only like three amps, but it's out. So yeah, it's definitely a few amps down. So cell three. Same again, 128 amps. 131. So cells one and four have a lower internal resistance than cells two and three. So you're only talking like a couple of amps in between, but you know, you have to go by the lowest rating. So this pack's 128 amps, whereas the others are 130. And I don't know if you heard it just, but my, uh, my battery's finished charging. So I have two on charge. I have a, a 5,500 mark King motor battery and a, a three cell dynamite one. So I'll go and see which one it was and I'll pause the recording and we'll test that one as well. So I'm back. It was actually the um, the King Motor battery that had finished charging. So you can see the specs there. 5,500 mark, 40 C. So at least while they're still lying out their arse, at least they've not gone ridiculously over the top with it. So let's plug it in anyway. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares to this. So 131 amps for this one, let's see what this one can do. So, we'll set the ratings. Now remember, at 100s we didn't set them on the Vant ones, but on this, because it's 5,500 we have to. And then, we'll set the thousands now. There we go, so that's set properly. Now this battery is quite a bit older than the Vant ones as well. So, but anyway, let's see. So there we go, there we go, as you can see the ohm rating is like 2 milliohm higher than the VAMP batteries, 
14C, which is 80 amps. So, let's try cell number two. 14C, 78 amps. So you can tell that not only is the C rating 2C lower, but because the battery itself's got a lower C, you know, more rating, that throughput's going to be lower as well. Whoa, that one's that one's ridiculous. 73 amps on cell three, so cell three is really weak, which does make sense because when I've had this out, you know, the cells have drained really unevenly. So that, that does make sense that it is that much lower. So the last and final cell. 15 see me back up. So yeah, cell number three is considerably weaker than the other three cells. And that is pretty much it, boys and girls. This is the ESR meter helping me to help you guys test batteries. So if you do have any batteries and you want them testing, please get in touch. Um, I'd prefer to stick it to the UK if you are gonna post things out to me. Cause um, I don't trust sending things overseas cause they do get lost. And the last thing I wanna do is be responsible for bloody postal service, losing someone's batteries. If anybody in the UK is watching this and you have some Max Amps batteries, please send them to me so that we can get them tested and see where they truly lie compared to the others. So that's it guys, any comments, any questions, any requests, please get in touch and I'll speak to you all soon.